Have you ever wondered how we made such monumental leaps in technology in such a short span of time? From the silicon-based integrated circuit chips that drive our digital world to the Kevlar that protects lives daily, our technological prowess has soared. But what if I told you there might be more to it? What if some of our revolutionary inventions were not solely the result of human ingenuity, but were rather gifted to us by extraterrestrial entities? Let's explore this fascinating and controversial theory. It's hard to understate just how revolutionary the transistor was for modern technology. These tiny devices, which can amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical power, are everywhere. They are the building blocks of all our modern digital devices, from computers to smartphones, all the way to our most advanced supercomputers. In short, they have defined the digital age. The origins of the transistor, however, are the subject of some debate. Officially, the invention is attributed to three American physicists at Bell Labs, John Bardeen, Walter Bratain, and William Shockley, who shared the 1956 Nobel Prize in Physics for their invention. They certainly did the hard scientific work, painstakingly researching semiconductors and experimenting with germanium and silicon to eventually create the first point contact transistor in 1947. However, those who propose that the transistor was reverse-engineered from alien technology point to a curious coincidence. The development and subsequent patenting of the transistor occurred shortly after the infamous Roswell incident in 1947, when a UFO is said to have crashed in New Mexico. The timing has led some to suggest that the rapid development of the transistor was spurred by reverse-engineering technology recovered from the crash. Supporters of this theory point out that the transistor represented a massive leap forward in technology, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. They argue that such a major advancement seems unlikely without some form of external input, in this case, extraterrestrial technology. Detractors, however, contend that the development of the transistor was a natural evolution of our understanding of physics and electronics, building upon years of prior research. The truth, as always, may lie somewhere in between. Whether spurred by human ingenuity, alien tech, or a combination of both, the transistor's impact on our world is undeniable. Another technological marvel that is often suggested to be a product of alien reverse engineering is Kevlar, a high-strength material best known for its use in bulletproof vests. Kevlar is five times stronger than steel, yet it's also lightweight, making it ideal for personal protective equipment, as well as a host of other industrial applications. The creation of Kevlar is officially attributed to Polish-American chemist Stephanie Kwolek, who was working for the DuPont Company in the 1960s. Her work in liquid crystalline polymers led to the accidental discovery of Kevlar's incredible strength and durability. But what if there's more to this story? In the world of UFO lore, there are theories that suggest Kevlar's origins might not be as straightforward as they seem. Some posit that Kevlar's creation might have been guided directly or indirectly by access to alien technology. According to this theory, studying alien technology could have propelled our understanding of materials science forward, leading to the development of Kevlar. How might this have worked? Well, if we consider the supposed crash of a UFO near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, it suggested that the debris recovered was made of a material that was both incredibly light and nearly indestructible. Such characteristics are strikingly similar to Kevlar's. Could Quolex research have been influenced by insights gained from studying this wreckage? This doesn't stop enthusiasts from speculating, however, as it's a tantalizing idea to think that our modern technology might have otherworldly origins. After all, the gap between science fiction and science fact can sometimes be surprisingly narrow. Given the alleged secrecy surrounding reverse engineering alien technology, it's no surprise that identifying the exact locations where this process supposedly occurs is challenging. However, there are a few sites frequently mentioned by those who follow the trail of extraterrestrial tech. One name that almost always comes up in discussions of reverse engineering. Alien technology is Area 51. Located in the remote Nevada desert, Area 51 has been the subject of UFO and alien theories for decades. Bob Lazar, a physicist who claims to have worked at a sublocation of Area 51 known as S-4, has stated that he worked on reverse engineering alien spacecraft there. If Lazar's accounts are accurate, Area 51 could very well be a hub for such clandestine operations. 
In addition to Area 51, there are mentions of other secretive military and research facilities in the US and around the world. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, for instance, is often associated with the Roswell incident. It's thought that wreckage from the crashed UFO was transported there for study. Overseas, Kapustin Yar, often referred to as Russia's Area 51, is rumored to have been involved in similar operations. Located in Astrakhan Oblast, near the Kazakhstan border, the military base has been shrouded in secrecy since its establishment by the Soviet Union in 1946. Then there's Pine Gap in Australia, a joint US-Australian satellite surveillance base. Some believe that Pine Gap may also be involved in reverse engineering extraterrestrial tech, based on its high level of secrecy and strategic importance to the US military. Bob Lazar, a figure synonymous with Area 51 and alien technology, once claimed to work at a site called S-4, located a short distance south of the infamous Nevada base. But Lazar's job wasn't your run-of-the-mill government gig. As per his account, he was tasked with reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. Lazar, a physicist by training, allegedly worked with a team to understand and potentially replicate the propulsion systems of nine different spacecraft that he claimed were of extraterrestrial origin. He stated that these crafts employed a technology that harnessed gravity itself, using a substance Lazar referred to as Element 115, which was unknown to science at the time of his claims. Element 115, or Moscovium as it is now known, was officially recognized by the scientific community years later in 2003. However, it doesn't possess the properties that Lazar attributed to it, adding a layer of controversy to his claims. Within the labyrinth of the S-4 facility, as Lazar described, were nine hangar-like doors built into the side of a mountain, each one a storehouse for alien spacecraft. In one instance, Lazar recounted a moment where he was allowed to step inside one of these vehicles, dubbed the Sport Model. He described it as a seamless metallic object, both remarkable and eerie in its otherworldly simplicity. Lazar's claims are often met with skepticism, especially as no concrete evidence has been provided to back up his story. Government records of his education and employment were also seemingly non-existent, making it even harder for many to believe his tales. Yet, his detailed account continues to capture the imagination of those intrigued by the potential for human interaction with extraterrestrial technology. So, does S-4 house the secrets of alien engineering, or is it merely the epicenter of a well-spun myth? As is often the case when dealing with stories of this nature, the truth remains elusive. Yet, the questions posed and the fascination stoked by these tales keep the discussion of alien technology alive and thriving. Philip J. Corso, a name that rings quite familiar in the realm of ufology and extraterrestrial encounters, claimed to have direct knowledge of the government's secretive endeavors into alien technology. His controversial book, The Day After Roswell, sent shockwaves through the scientific and ufological communities, becoming a cornerstone for those who believe in the conspiracy of government suppression of alien technology. According to Corso, a retired U.S. Army colonel, he was directly involved in the research and development program that reverse-engineered alien technology retrieved from the infamous Roswell crash in 1947. He alleges that he was assigned to a Pentagon project under the command of Lieutenant General Arthur Trudeau, whose task was to filter Roswell technology into the mainstream through defense contractors without raising public awareness about the alien origins of the tech. Among the technologies Corso claimed to have worked on were integrated circuit chips, fiber optics, and lasers, technologies that have since revolutionized our lives in ways we couldn't imagine in the pre-Roswell era. He argued that these advances were not simply the result of human progress, but were significantly accelerated by the study of alien tech. Corso also claimed that night vision technology was developed through the reverse engineering of alien optical systems. He proposed that extraterrestrial entities had superior night vision, which humans tried to replicate by examining the biomechanics of retrieved alien eyes. Critics have challenged Corso's assertions due to the lack of documented proof and the convenient timing of his revelations, coming forth many decades after the purported events. But the startling specificity of his claims continues to ignite interest and debate. True or not, Corso's accounts continue to add fuel to the conversation surrounding the possibilities 
of reverse-engineered alien technology and its implications for our understanding of human technological development. And as always, thanks for watching. It's indeed intriguing to consider how our technological advancements could be intertwined with extraterrestrial phenomena. From alleged facilities like Area 51 and S4, to claims made by people like Bob Lazar and Philip J. Corso, the stories and theories around alien tech are never-ending, but regardless of whether these assertions hold any weight, they surely open up a world of imagination and curiosity, urging us to question, explore, and keep an open mind. So the next time you use your smartphone or see a bulletproof vest, just remember, it may not be all human ingenuity. What if I told you that alien technology is not just in the realm of science fiction, but potentially right under our noses? Some say governments around the world may have been collecting, studying, even reverse engineering extraterrestrial tech for decades. And what if we could trace this interaction all the way back to the Roswell incident in 1947, or perhaps even earlier? Let's delve into this fascinating world of UFOs, government secrets, and the tech that could be out of this world. Now the question that stands out like a sore thumb is, when did the government actually start collecting these unidentified flying objects? The timing seems to be a subject of considerable debate, with some pointing as far back as the early 20th century. However, the watershed moment that brought UFOs into the public eye was undoubtedly the infamous Roswell incident of 1947. After the alleged crash of a UFO near Roswell, New Mexico, many UFO researchers and enthusiasts believe that the US government initiated a concerted effort to recover and study extraterrestrial technology. This is where things get murky. Official records deny the presence of any extraterrestrial artifact, explaining the incident as the crash of a high-altitude surveillance balloon. However, theorists and witnesses insist that there was a cover-up. The years that followed the Roswell incident saw an increase in reported UFO sightings, not just in the US but around the globe. Many believe this marked the beginning of covert government programs designed to acquire, study, and potentially reverse-engineer extraterrestrial technology. Through the Cold War and the space race right into the 21st century, the narrative of governmental involvement with UFOs and potential alien technology has persisted. Enter Philip J. Corso, a name synonymous with the most famous alleged UFO incident in history. The Roswell Incident of 1947, Corso, a former U.S. Army colonel, shook the world with his claims in the book The Day After Roswell. According to Corso, he was entrusted with foreign technology recovered from the Roswell crash. He alleged that the U.S. government had reverse-engineered this technology and then seeded it into the private sector with Corso playing a pivotal role in the process. But what exactly was this foreign technology? Corso described artifacts such as a thin, clear material like plastic, reminiscent of the integrated circuits used in our modern computers. He also wrote of fiber optics, lasers, super tenacity fibers that led to the development of Kevlar and other advanced technology that was apparently far beyond human capability at the time. He even claimed that the Roswell craft itself was a kind of lifeboat for the alien crew and was designed to interface with them directly. Now. That's a thought to send chills down your spine, isn't it? A spaceship not just controlled by the creatures, but an actual part of them. However, skeptics have challenged Corso's claims, pointing to discrepancies in his accounts and citing the rapid pace of human technological advancement as a more plausible explanation for these innovations. But Corso's tale is just one piece of the puzzle. Let's dive deeper, shall we? Now, you might be thinking, if this is all true, why doesn't the government just come out and say it? Well, believe it or not, they kind of have. Over the past few years, government agencies, particularly in the United States, have been more forthcoming about the UFO phenomenon. In 2020, the US Department of Defense officially released three short videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena. These were captured by Navy pilots during training flights between 2004 and 2015. Each of the videos showcases fast-moving, oblong objects racing through the sky and performing maneuvers that seem to defy our understanding of physics. The government's acknowledgement of these videos as real, unidentified objects, is a big deal. It's the closest we've come to an official admission that there are things in our skies that our best military and scientific minds can't explain. Then, there's the Pentagon's UAP task force, 
established in 2020 with a mandate to investigate sightings of unexplained aerial vehicles by military personnel. So while they're not saying, hey, we've got aliens, they're certainly saying, hey, there's something weird in the sky and we don't know what it is. But this acknowledgement doesn't tell us what these unidentified objects are, where they come from, or who, or what, is controlling them. But it's a step towards transparency that was unthinkable even a decade ago. Could it be possible that this is a slow, calculated strategy to prepare us for something bigger, to acclimate us to the reality of the unknown? Perhaps. But for now, we're left with more questions than answers. So, let's explore further. After all, the best is yet to come. But how long have governments been aware of this alien phenomenon? And when did contact supposedly occur? Let's delve into that. According to some researchers and theorists, contact with extraterrestrial life may have started much earlier than we think. Reports of sightings and encounters date back centuries, with many ancient civilizations attributing their advancements to the sky gods. But when we talk about modern times, things start to get a bit more concrete, albeit still largely speculative. Some theorists point to the events of 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico as a significant turning point. They claim that a crash involving an extraterrestrial spacecraft occurred and that the US government recovered debris and even alien bodies. If this is true, then governments have been in contact with alien technology and potentially aliens themselves for over seven decades. But perhaps more interestingly, some whistleblowers and researchers argue that direct purposeful contact has been established between humans and extraterrestrial beings. Former Canadian Minister of Defence Paul Hellyer publicly stated in 2005 that not only do UFOs exist, but that governments have been in direct contact with extraterrestrials for many years. He even goes so far as to say that at least four species of aliens have been visiting Earth for thousands of years. Similar claims have been made by others, suggesting that this contact has resulted in a wealth of shared technology and knowledge, much of which remains top secret. If these assertions are correct, then we are dealing with a global, multi-generational cover-up, with implications that would shake our society to its very core. But why would the government keep such world-altering information secret? Well, let's take a look at some potential reasons. Now, let's talk about possibilities. What are the potential technologies we could imagine extraterrestrial beings to have? And which of these might governments potentially have access to? For starters, let's consider the obvious, spacecraft technology. We're not just talking about sleek aerodynamic designs that defy gravity. These technologies could potentially involve manipulation of space-time itself. Ideas such as warp drives, teleportation devices and wormhole generators are all part of this speculative discussion. If such technologies are within the grasp of extraterrestrial civilizations, it could explain the seemingly impossible maneuvers reported in many UFO sightings. Then there's energy technology. It's no secret that we're facing an energy crisis on Earth, but an advanced alien civilization may have already solved this issue. Technologies that allow for harnessing energy from stars, otherwise known as Dyson spheres or Dyson swarms, or even directly tapping into the fabric of space-time for limitless energy, are all within the realm of theoretical possibility. And what about medical technology? Some abductees claim to have been healed or altered by their alien captors. Could we see advanced medical equipment capable of rapidly healing injuries, curing diseases, or even halting the aging process? But perhaps most interesting is the possibility of communication and information technology that could provide access to an interstellar internet, connecting civilizations across the galaxy or even the universe. This could potentially give us access to a wealth of knowledge beyond anything we've ever imagined. Of course, these are all speculative. We're still waiting on solid proof. But if even one of these technologies is real and within our reach, it could entirely reshape our civilization. And here's where things get a little tricky. You might be wondering, if the government does have such revolutionary technology, why keep it hidden? There are a few theories, really. For starters, any new technology that offers a significant strategic advantage is likely to be kept secret, especially in the context of national security. If these technologies can be weaponized, it would be natural for governments to want to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. Moreover, disclosure could lead to social, economic and religious upheaval. 
imagine the societal impact of realizing we're not alone in the universe or the economic consequences of introducing free, limitless energy. We could be looking at a complete restructuring of power and wealth, something those currently in power might not be too keen on. Then there's the potential for panic. In 1938, a radio broadcast of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds led to widespread fear among listeners who believed an actual alien invasion was underway. This incident has often been cited as an example of the mass hysteria that could result from the sudden revelation of extraterrestrial existence. Finally, consider that the governments might be suppressing the information not for our protection, but because they're being instructed to by the extraterrestrials themselves. Maybe the aliens don't believe we're ready for such revelations, or they might have their own reasons for wanting to stay in the shadows. All in all, these considerations paint a complex picture of the potential reasons for the suppression of alien technology. But remember, these are just theories. Until there is official disclosure, we can only speculate, conjecture, and ask ourselves, what if? So, there you have it. Philip J. Corso's detailed assertions about back-engineering alien tech from Roswell and the intriguing timelines of government interactions with UFOs. Could it be that we've had access to interstellar technology for decades? And if so, what's been holding back the big reveal? Food for thought, isn't it? As always, thanks for watching and remember the truth is out there, or is it?